Hi guys, thanks for stopping by today. I'm Marilyn. Now on this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this Tumblr and I used a hack that I saw posted on Facebook. Now, if your Tumblr process works perfectly, you don't need this hack. This hack doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't work with every oven, but I'm just gonna share with you what I did. Also, if you're interested in this design, I got this off of Creative Fabrica and I'll include the link to that in the video description. Now the sublimation tumbler that I'm going to use is one that I got off of Amazon. I got four tumblers, four lids, and then four stainless steel straws that came with the cleaner. I'll put a link to these in the description below. If you use my links, thank you so much. I do receive a small commission for that and I truly appreciate it. Now inside this tumbler, is a little rubber thing that you put on the bottom after you've sublimated it. You want to wait until then so you don't melt it. Then I did want to show you my Fiskars cutting board. You have this little wire that shows you exactly where you're going to cut. It's very precise. I love this. So I wanted to show this to you as well. Okay, so the first step, I'm just going to clean this with a little alcohol just to remove any oils from my hands or dirt that might have been on it when it shipped. I'll dry it, and within just a minute or two, it's going to be dry. Now here's my image, and I cut it down with my Fiskars cutters. What I've done is I've made sure there's absolutely no white on this edge. So I actually cut off just a tiny strip of the design. Now this design's hard to see because it's not gonna look really dark where the seam is. Then I made the bottom seam to where there was no white on it, and the top seam, there's maybe a tiny bit. It'll extend above the cup. Now this side of the paper, there is a little seam, and that's going to overlap. It's not going to be against the cup, and so that's okay. So let me show you how I like to wrap these. <coughs> So I have my image flat on the table, and then the side that has absolutely no white goes down first, and the other side goes on top of it. Because I'm flat on the table, I can make sure that the bottom of the paper is flush with the bottom of the cup, and then that also makes sure that my top and my bottom seams end pretty much in the exact right spot. Okay, so now that I have it placed, I'll go ahead and lay it down so you can see it. I'm going to use this heat tape, and I got that off of Amazon. So, let me make sure I have the right side down. Okay, so this is the side with no white showing. I'm going to make sure that I pull this paper around as tight as I can. Then I'll go ahead and put one piece down right in the center. Okay. Now it's gonna be easier to work with because I have a little bit of tape on there already. So again, my bottom piece is here. So I'm gonna pull that top piece over it, pulling as tightly as I can. Now you wanna tape from the top to the bottom because if you tape here and you pull against it, you might pull your top piece back. So always start on the side that's on top, get it stuck down really well to the paper, and then pull on your tape. Again on this side, I'm on the side of the paper that's on the top. Pull the paper tight, stretch the tape a little bit, and tape it down. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that process. I'll have some little gaps, but I am going to put this on most of the surface of the cup. And for a lot of people, this is overkill, but I've had enough tumblers that didn't do that well that I try to do whatever it takes to get a good result. 
You know, the tumblers are pretty expensive. The tape is not. Now I can see some little air gaps here and here. I am eventually going to put a piece of tape down there, but now I'm going to go back and put just a couple of really small pieces of tape. Really try to stretch those out to cover those gaps up or to close the gaps in actually. Again, if you don't want to use this much tape, then don't. <laughs> I'm just a little paranoid. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. At the top, well, I'll lay it down so you can see it. I'm going to take a fairly long piece of tape, and then, once again, here's the top piece. This is on the bottom. So I want to cover from the top piece over the other piece. I'm going to hold it down with this thumb, and I'm going to pull pretty tightly on it to stretch that tape out. Now what that does is it has a little bit of a rebound effect. It pulls in the paper. So I'll just follow that same pattern, hold the tape down with my thumb, stretch to the left. Then I'm going to go smoothly over the top. And then I have one little gap, so I'll finish that off. Now I do the same process on the bottom. Okay, so this time, this side is on the top. So I'll start on that side. Hold it down with my left thumb and pull to the right. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is just roll around this edge, pushing in making sure that that is really tight against the cup. I'll do the same thing at the top. Then I'm ready for the tape that goes down the seam and my shrink wrap. Now I have tape covering the whole thing to there. So I'll just start up here where I need it. And I think that's good. Now for the shrink wrap, my seam is right here. Just going to push down on that seam one more time. Okay, so I put my shrink wrap on. My seam is right under this smooth part. I want my seam under a smooth part. I don't want it under the seam of the shrink wrap or the side of the shrink wrap. I think maybe it'll be smoother on the seam if I have it on the smooth part of the shrink wrap. Now I'm just going to use this embossing gun, but I need to plug it in. So give me just a minute. Then just to be on the safe side, I'll have this heat resistant glove on my left hand because that's the hand I'll use to because that's the hand I'll use to turn this and to hold this. All right. Okay, so my seams right here, that's where I'm going to start. Now, I've heard people say that since this shrink wrap is heat activated, you really don't have to have it extremely, extremely tight because it'll keep stretching and tightening down once it's in the oven. 
as to whether that's true or not. I really don't know. I assume it is, but I don't know. I haven't tested it. So here's the trick that I saw posted. If you have a convection oven like the one on the left and it's too short for you to stand your cups up, this might be something you could try. Now when I did my tumbler video, I tried to do this in my little cheap oven. That's an Oster that I got at Walmart and it was only $44 and I think 88 cents. I had a hard time keeping the temperature up even when it sat the way it's supposed to sit. But when I had it up on its side, I could not get the temperature to stay consistently over 250 degrees. Now, a friend of mine loaned me this oven. Now, these ovens, their temperatures go up and down, and you can't just depend on what you set it on. So, for example, I have my temperature set at 400. Right now, it's about 385, 390 degrees, somewhere along there. But I've noticed that it will go up over 400 degrees even when I have it set on 400. So a thermometer is a really good tool to have. That way you can regulate your temperature by turning up or down the temperature or opening the door. So I'm going to go ahead and put my tumbler in here. The instructions for these tumblers say to cook them 8 minutes. I'm just going to do 6. I'll stand it up, cook it for 3 minutes, then I'll rotate it and do three more minutes. Now, when I open the door, get my cup in there, and move my thermometer, I want to do it fairly quickly so I don't let a lot of heat out. Now you can see I've moved some things around. I wanted to bring the oven over here onto my table. The vents on this oven are up here and down here. So I have it built up on some pieces of wood, and then there's also a metal rack under there. I want to be somewhere between 375 and 400. Right now it looks like I'm maybe around 385, 390. When I open the door, the temperature will probably drop a little bit. Now, I'm going to put this in with the seam in front. I'll cook it for three minutes, and then after three minutes I'll open the door, turn it around quickly because you don't want all the heat to escape. Now I can see it's a little hotter than I want it. Again, I'm going to lose some heat when I open the door, so that's okay for now. But if I want to bring the temperature down later, I can turn it down here. I can open the door a little bit to vent it to get the temperature down. Whatever I do, I want to try to stay under 400. Okay, I'm, I want to turn that so the glare isn't in your face. All right, that's a little better. Now I see that temperature dropping. Hopefully that'll pick back up here very shortly. If not, I can go ahead and turn it up here. Now I can also see that the cup is kind of close to some of the heating elements on the left side, so I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Okay, I had to open my door a couple times because it was too close to the heating element. At least I felt like it was. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it, and then three more minutes, then we'll check it. Now that's starting to get a little bit hot, so I'm going to vent this just for a second. All right, so I can go ahead and turn this oven off, and then I'm going to take it out, set it right up here, and let it cool for about 10 minutes. Okay, my shrink wrap melted quite a bit, but let's hope for the best. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, that's pretty. I've only done, I don't know, maybe five or six, but I'll bet half of them have not turned out so well. I've burnt them. I don't know what I've done. Well, in one, I had stripes where I had tape around it. So then I decided to use the shrink wrap. One of them I had paper sticking to it, so I think I overheated it. That is drop dead gorgeous. Now let me show you the bottom. If it looks like there's white, that's probably a glare in the camera because that coverage goes all the way down and it's even slightly around the bottom. That's what you want. Now remember I told you about the seam. It's probably not going to be super noticeable because of the design. You can barely see it, but that's really nice. And then up top, you don't see any ghosting or anything like that, even where the design's pretty dark. Again, if you see something, it's probably the glare of the camera. Because as I turn this, you can see there's no white up there, except where they're supposed to be. I can't wait to give this to my friend Amara at work. She is going to love it. So if you want to see the design, I did this on a prior video. Check that out. Thanks for staying around all the way till the end. Until my next video. Bye-bye.